started on our last talk in this afternoon. This is Dominic Tom, he's from the University of Vermont. He's going to be discussing the ecosystem services and the biodiversity as outputs of forest stand development in the American Northeast. Good yeah, um, thanks very much for the introduction. Um, well, when I came up with this title, the results were very preliminary. Now I would actually frame it a little different, and it's more about the climate sensitivity of the forest development and how that is linked to ecosystem services and biodiversity. But before I talk about the future, I better start with the past. So um, as most people here are probably familiar with, um, there has been a lot of um, changes in and land use in uh, the eastern, uh, in eastern North America. Uh, if we have, uh, as an example here from central Massachusetts, the forest has been declined a lot in, uh, since 1650 and been converted to pasture and has been cultivated. But since, let's say, around 1850 to maybe 1900, forests are recovering largely on this area again. So that also means that now forests are aging uh, in many parts of, uh, of, the, of this region. And as forests are aging, they're also um, changing in their composition and in the, in the structure. So in terms of structure, it's likely that they start like very homogeneous and then the structure becomes more heterogeneous. And um, like for composition, we have like this classical model of early successional species turn into late successional species that does not really apply here but, um, in the north uh, east where the dynamics are a little bit weird and complicated but um, at least there should also be something going on with the tree species composition so as for a structure and composition is changing this also has an effect on all kinds of ecosystem services and biodiversity um, here an example of a simulation study for total ecosystem carbon after a stand replacing this turbine. So first of all, uh, carbon goes down. Initially, um, the above ground um, carbon will be, will be gone, but then the, like the soils and forest floor carbon has a lagged effect. And then it, the carbon stocks would recover again. Um, for Species diversity, as shown here, it's not that clear. This is a study from Europe. So it depends a lot on the guilds that you are uh, trying to uh, project here. But at least there, is, there, there are some trends that, that say that old growth forests, for instance, have quite a high diversity overall. Um, so a big question with all that is how is forest development linked to the sensitivity of ecosystem services and, uh, and biodiversity and the climate change? Um, so as you see in this map here, this is the sensitivity of the vegetation and there's quite some difference like these red spots, they are very, uh, their, their plants are very sensitive, the darker spots, uh, they are rather insensitive to climate change. Uh, so as, as those, um, as there are differences in like how the vegetation is sensitive to climate, there's very likely also a difference in how ecosystem services and biodiversity are different. So the objectives of my talk here are, first of all, to analyze the performance of ecosystem services and biodiversity indicators and their associations along a forest development gradient. Second, to identify spatial hotspots in the sensitivity of these indicators uh, to temperature and precipitation changes. And third, uh, to test the climate sensitivity of ecosystem services and biodiversity associations, so how they are connected. Um, the study region that we choose is quite large, so you have the Great Lakes here. And we have quite a, a, a big gradient here in environmental conditions, reaching from temperate forests to boreal forests. Um, 
So we also have some plots here. We included also plots from Canada, but clearly dominating um, are, are the, is our data that we have from the US here in this database. So what we did was, first of all, we collected data, individual plot data from different databases and from a literature review. So lots of data comes from the FIA data or like from the Canadian NFI data. Um, but we also have other data sources in here. Um, then we isolated the partial effects of dominant forest age. So this is the, the age um, of the uh, dominant and um, co-dominant tree species, um, uh, the trees that are in the stand. Uh, so this is we use as a substitute for forest development as an indicator for forest development and checked how, the, how, how this is related to uh, ecosystem services and biodiversity indicators uh, using a full Bayesian approach, uh, generalized linear models, uh, probability-based. And then we used the final models in the end to predict the sensitivity of these indicators to an increase in temperature and precipitation. So first of all, this is the data the, that we acquired and we had in total 18,507 plots included in this entire analysis. And in total, we had nine indicators related to carbon storage, uh, growth rate, so timber growth rate, and uh, species richness data. Um, so as you can see here, the distribution as expected is quite like there are lots of plots uh, that are within, let's say, 100 years of age. Um, so this is here the number of plots, log scale, so that we can also see the, um, the tail here of the, of the plot. And there are very few uh, really old forests in, in this entire region. Um, so this is, the, this is the first result here. So this plot shows you the overall performance of these indicators. So we have here um, species richness, for instance, where there's not so much of a change, but like all these, uh, the, the three indicators together that we have in there, I'll come to that later, um, they increase first of all and then remain quite stable over time. Total ecosystem carbon is increasing, even accelerating here in the end. And the growth rate peaks here at around 40 to 50 years, then declines slightly and goes up again in the end in older forests, which is quite interesting and wasn't really expected. Um, if we take these all together, this is the average over all these curves, can see that first of all, we get an increase up to about 40 years here. And then in the end, um, the, the overall performance of ecosystems to deliver all that um, increases again in older forests. Um, if we take these curves and uh, subtract them from each other, we get kind of the association of these different factors. So if we take, for instance, richness and total ecosystem carbon, we de derive this curve here, the black one. Uh, if, we, if we just focus on this average here, you can see that the divergence between these curves is high, first of all, but then goes down as forests are aging. So that means that the association between um, carbon storage, timber growth, and species richness uh, is becoming like stronger. Um, so how is this distributed on the landscape? If we, if we now take these indicators together and look at how that's scattered, um, we can see that in the central south, we have the highest ecosystem performance, while the northwest performs worst. So now let's get a step further and see what happens if we do the prediction with an increase of four degrees and 200 millimeters precipitation. So the interesting thing is now that the Great Lakes region is red, so that's not good. And then we have like in the northwest and northeast uh, some green areas, so there the overall ecosystem performance actually even increases slightly. Um, 
and but uh, we, if we try, uh, disentangle that a little further, we can see that the responses were quite different among these indicators across these indicators. So, like under 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 the current climatic conditions, total ecosystem carbon is also like here in the central south quite high. But overall, the decrease in total ecosystem carbon is quite similar across the entire region uh, under these changed climatic conditions. If we have a look at timber, we see the opposite effect. So as many other studies also predict, the, the, the growth rates um, increase here in the entire region. Um, if we have a look at uh, species richness, there the response is not quite clear. So we have some regions that are red, so this actually reflects pretty well uh, the overall picture if we take them all together. So these are kind of canceling out each other. So now you think, is this guy nuts in front? How is that possible? Carbon is decreasing, but growth is increasing. Uh, so maybe he is, but uh, I have a, at least he has an answer to this question. Um, so if we now look into each different indicator here, this is above ground li uh, life carbon um, and growth rate here. Both are increasing with increasing temperature and precipitation. But the thing is that soil organic carbon and forest floor carbon were highly sensitive to, to the changes in temperature and precipitation. So this is then the reason why total e ecosystem carbon decline, uh, decreased. Uh, for, the, for, the, um, for the different gills here, tree species diversity, lichens and uh, vascular plants, we have quite mixed effects, um, especially lichens reacted very strongly to changes in temperature and precipitation. Um, so now if we take this over stand development and have the same prediction here with plus four degrees and 200 millimeters, and we compare how the associations um, differ if we now increase that, um, this, this plot basically tells you that if, if this is getting positive here, then there is a higher divergence under these changed climatic conditions. So the, the association between all these indicators is, is lower. So with, within the first 50 years here, we have a lower association between uh, these indicators, but then it's getting even stronger and ends in the same strong association as we have seen also under baseline climate conditions. So how is that possible? I just want to get a little bit into a discussion about that. Um, so as forests are aging, and as I mentioned it before, the structure complexity is also increasing. And other studies have shown that, for instance, if for a structure, which is here a structure complexity index, and uh, we have, we have uh, above ground carbon here on the x-axis, if that's increasing, then also our carbon is increasing. Or here, this is a study from Europe that's, that's disentangled the different effects of uh, forest structure variables. These, these are the very dark ones here. And as forests are aging, these variables become more important. So that, that, that might be one of the reasons why we saw this increase in growth and total ecosystem carbon as, um, as forests are getting older. For the biodiversity indicators, it very much depends on the taxa that is included in the analysis. So three species here were increasing slightly, but then remained quite stable. The lichens even peaked here early, which we did not even really expect it. We thought it would peak late. But uh, this is just richness and not abundance, so that might be also a difference. And vascular plant species here are decreasing with forest, forest age. So this is why the response overall was not very strong for the uh, species richness indicators. Uh, yeah, so from there we, could, we can think about forest management implications and if we want to foster all kinds of uh, diversity, so different taxa on the landscape, then we should of course not just 
have old growth forests, but let's say a mixture of different um, forest development stages. So that's one thing. But if we now think about how it's currently, how the current distribution is of age classes, you see that there's such a big gap in uh, old growth forests currently available, although they are performing the best for all these different indicators investigated. So um, an increase in conserved areas would then make sense or also uh, manage more forests towards old growth characteristics. Um, right, and as, as we have seen here um, that the um, difference in like uh, the or well, that the associations um, are changing with climate change um, it would also make sense to increase rotation periods in some parts where forests are managed like very in, in very short rotations um, so like for instance in New Brunswick I know forests are sometimes managed like with rotation periods from 60 to 80 years which is very short and would maybe then not make too much sense. I have to rush a bit. I've seen that. Um, <laughs> right. This is the last. This is the last uh, management implication. So, um, it, as we have also seen, that there's a divergence or a difference within the landscape. Um, it could. Uh, it could be also an emphasis be put on um, uh, on, on put a, like emphasizing those areas that are currently most under threat um, to, to put in adaptive management, ad uh, to adapt forest management there. Okay, not too fast maybe. The summary and conclusion, just quickly, individual ecosystem services and biodiversity and their associations are sensitive to increasing temperature and precipitation regimes. Older forests outperform younger forests in average uh, uh, in average performance, uh, independence of the climatic conditions, and then promoting currently underrepresented old forests may help to optimize age, age class distributions and thus to safeguard ecosystem services and biodiversity in the future. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Okay, still have time for a question. Yeah. Oh, good talk. I was curious, how, would, how did you estimate stand age? And, and follow up from that, did you think about doing putting another variable in like range of age within the stand? You talked about, I think you said dominant stand age. Yeah. Or whatever dominant species is. But looking at maybe the variability or like the variability in size class and how you think that might affect some of these ecosystem services. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is, it was a restriction, so we did not have like all the different kinds of uh, data for, let's say, DBH distributions, age class distributions, and all that from all data sources. So we had to simplify that for to get this big data uh, data set in the end. Um, but age in general is um, defined in the same way for all these data sets and that is the average over dominant and co-dominant trees in, in the plot. So this is that like... Um, uh, how, uh, yeah, um, yeah, chord. <laughs> yeah. Is that at the that older forest you do have a variability because natural disturbance now happens. Yeah. So that increases the biodiversity structure. That's where you get that. Yeah, I mean that's yeah, that's pretty likely. So that you would have more with the forest structure later on uh, with partial dis disturbances. You may keep carbon, of course, as dead wood also decays over a longer time period, and the growth rate may, might accelerate at the same time if you have a rich understory and also some large trees at the same time so that the, the leaf area overall is actually quite high and there's a lot of potential for photosynthesis. This is at least how we think that um, that, that might be the reason for the increase in the end. Model the ecosystem performance in the, in the future, so the plus four degrees. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so this is just based on the Bayesian model. So we just, it's, just, it's a sensitivity analysis. So it's not a process-based model that is behind it, which would probably the, be the most robust way to do that. But um, we, we just test in this case what happens if we now switch the temperature or the pre and the precipitation to something that is, let's say, uh, predicted for the end of the century. That's right. Yeah. Kai. Yeah, so you've got one figure with North America that shows vegetation since kind of the development Why is it that vegetation um, in the world which is more sensitive and vegetation that's in the South East Coast of Canada? Yeah. Um, that's also a good question. Um, so I think that this is because uh, you have generally a higher diversity in the south than the boreal zone, so there are not too many species that can really react to what's happening. Um, also, the species that are in the south, they are, they are just more adapted to heat periods than in the north, I would guess. Um, but I mean, I did not. I did not read the study entirely, so I cannot tell you exactly why. <laughs> All right. Thank you.